I'm the mom of five amazing little kids, but I discovered a couple years ago that I needed something that was just for me, so I tried resin painting, and I fell in love with it. But I quickly discovered that being a resin artist was really expensive. So I started exploring ways that I could create beautiful art but do it on a budget. Once I discovered that that was possible, my new goal became to teach other people how to do the same thing so that resin art could be accessible for anyone. I believe that there's an artist in all of us and we just need the opportunity to discover it in ourselves. Thank you for joining me on my art journey and I hope that you create your own art as well as you learn from my videos. Remember, no matter what your final product looks like, your art is beautiful because you created it with your own hands. Ooh, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista coming at you today with a couple product tests that I'm really excited about. First, I bought these three molds from Let's Resin and I'm really excited to try them out. For today I'm just going to use the square because I want to just make an art piece that I could put in a stand and have sitting up somewhere. So I'm going to move these other two out of the way, but these are silicone molds and you'll see I have a mess everywhere. My art space is crazy right now, but I'm just having so many fun things to work on. So you can kind of see from the edges of this probably that I have a mess everywhere and that is what it is. I've got a bunch of things going on. The other thing that I'm super, super excited to show you guys, you won't believe this, you know I am a stone coat countertop resin person, but I bought a different resin. And this resin is called Total Boat, the brand, and it's a high performance epoxy, and it's a two to one mixing ratio instead of a one to one. But here is the crazy fabulous thing. The hardener and the resin both come with pumps that are already pre-measured. So you literally count how many pumps of each you use, and that's it. You do not have to weigh, you do not have to measure. And um, I just did a really big art project at the library in town opening their summer reading program and I got to be the featured artist and paint live with people asking questions and things and I used this and I got the fast you can get slow medium or fast curing I got the fast because you know I am impatient this stuff is crazy fast this is even faster than stone coat so probably unless you want to work super fast you should get the uh the medium speed curing instead of the quick curing because this stuff it says within 45 minutes but I got like less than 10. I mean it is really fast and I did stop and talk to somebody yesterday at the library while I was painting just to tell them a little about what I was doing and I looked over and my whole cup was completely melting because it was so hot and it, had, it was just crazy. So anyway this stuff is great though I really like it it's just making sure that you move quickly. So I'm going to do that today and show you guys this. I haven't done a lot with it yet. I did one gigantic geode, which I can show you at the library. And so that was really fun. I have to touch up the edges and pour a clear coat and then I'm going to go give it to them and they're actually going to hang it in the library, which is really nice of them. So I am going to mix this up and I have not yet actually done this with alcohol ink because it goes so fast. We'll see what happens. I'm hoping that what I get as a result is the alcohol ink sinking in and doing its 3D effect in this tray, but not pulling in. I don't know if you've seen other alcohol ink and resin videos where everything slowly moves to the middle and you have a lot of clear on the edges. I'm hoping that with how fast this goes, I will avoid that. So let me get started. I am going to use Ranger brand alcohol ink. And if you haven't done this before, the white ink is actually heavier than the colored ink. So you drop your colors all over first and then you drop white on top and it pushes the color in and it looks really super cool. So I am going to speed this up because you guys don't want to have to watch all of this really slowly. And here we go.
gonna let this do its thing. It's already moving kind of slower than when I've done this with other resin. It's fun to watch these move and do their thing. But I am going to let this sit. Please do not use your blowtorch at this point. If you have watched some of my other videos, <laughs> you will see why. I am gonna let this sit and then tomorrow I will come pull it out of the mold for you guys and show you what it looks like and we will see both if we like this mold and how the Total Boat resin compared to at least what I'm used to with the Stone Coat countertop resin. All right, it has been not quite 24 hours, but I checked on this at the two hour mark and it was already pretty hard, but when I picked the whole thing up, I could definitely bend it. So now this is completely hard and I'm going to peel it out of the mold. This is always the fun part. Ooh, so this mold, I was also testing this. This doesn't grab it at all. This is actually awesome. So, so far I would say that the um, Let's Resin products are great. All right, here we go. This is always fun. Ooh, cool. So you, this resin, yeah, this is a great smooth finish. I think the mold turned out great. Looks like it's good. So a couple things. Obviously, I like the molds. That was great. The resin. So the resin was great. It looks like it's super perfectly clear, which I really like. There are a couple things that I noticed. After I did this video, I also made some jewelry with it and what ended up happening was it gets hot so fast that I didn't have time to finish my jewelry before the cup started smoking and it got hard and that happened a couple different times so I would not suggest using the fast hardener unless you want to do bigger things like something like this where it's all poured at once or I did a really big geode that I showed you guys that worked out great because I just mixed it with the pump and then put one color in, mixed it, and then poured the whole thing. But if you wanna do tinier projects that require the resin to sit for even a little bit, I would not advise it. But it is clear, it is smooth, no bubbles. It looks, the surface of this looks beautiful. So I would recommend it for that. All right, you guys, to finish this piece, I would like to add a pretty design to it. I was in Meyer the other day. Um, for those of you not in the US Midwest, that is a grocery store slash home goods and everything chain, kind of like Walmart, only a lot nicer. <laughs> and in their craft section, they have these little iron-on decals that they had clearanced for a dollar. So I picked this up and I picked up a few other designs. But I was thinking about this piece and thinking, how pretty would this look in a garden? Like if you hung it out on your back porch or in your yard. So what I'd like to do, because of all the pretty flowery looking colors, is add that large butterfly to it and then I'm gonna drill a couple holes and add a little rope to it so that it can hang either you know on your deck or wherever so I'm gonna get started with that I don't know what the back of this is like I don't know if it's gonna be sticky and I can just stick it on like a sticker and then coat it in one more layer of resin or if it's not sticky just in case I've got a heat tool sitting out that I might try to from a distance kind of heat it because that's how they stick when you iron them on but it could be a spectacular failure if that happens because I don't know if that works or not. So I'll speed this up. I'm going to get this out and stick it on and then mix my last coat of resin and cover this all with one more clear coat. All right. Unfortunately, this could get exciting because the plastic <laughs> is sticky, but the butterfly is not. So I'm gonna to attempt to do this with my heat gun and kind of come in from a distance. I'm really excited. I found this heat tool at Joanne Fabric also, and every once in a while, if you're signed up for their, whatever they call it, their little coupon club thing, you get bigger discounts on things, and I got a 60% off coupon in the mail and for one item. And so I'd been wanting to grab one of these, but you know me, I'm frugal. I didn't want to spend too much money on it. So I waited and I used my 60% off coupon for this and I got this for like, I think seven or $8. So I am going to come in, I'm going to turn this on and come in at an angle from far away and just slowly try to heat some of this and see how it does. If you've worked with resin, you know that um, although my resin is now hard, the heat added to this can make it a little softer, which is fine. I just don't want to accidentally scratch it or move it while it's soft, but I'm going to try this out and we'll see what happens. Whoa, 
I think this might have actually worked. Let's see. Oh, we can't grab the edge. There we go. Oh, it's part way there. I don't know if you can see, but it is coming off of the plastic, but it's not completely stuck yet. Looks like it's stuck in some places, but not all. I think I'm going to try to get the rest of this plastic off and then heat it a little more to see if I can get it to stick. We'll see what happens. Oh gosh, that's going to be so pretty. All right. <clears throat> Who knows, you guys? It is getting warm. <laughs> if I can get it stuck down just a little more, then I can go ahead and put the resin over it and it'll stay permanently. Wow! I'm so excited that worked! Okay, guys, new technique. That was super cool. So, as long as you don't do it too hot and come in too fast, heat it up slowly. Uh, that looks really nice. And you guys, there are tons of iron-on decals you could use. Especially, um, you guys have seen me do some things with Cricut machines. If you don't have a Cricut machine, this is a super cool alternative. You could just go ahead and go buy the designs that you want and stick them right on. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. And for a dollar, that's so cool. All right, I'm going to prop this up and mix my last thing of resin and just pour a clear coat and heat it with my blowtorch and let it harden. And then we'll add some nice little tiny holes and a little rope so that this can hang up. and not a blowtorch if you're doing the iron-on transfer because you can just control how much heat you're using. But this is so cute. I'm going to let this cure and then I will show you guys how I drill holes and we'll hang it up and take some pictures and be all done. It's now been three hours since I poured. This is already solid. Love this product. This is actually great. My butterfly in a couple places floated up a little. I don't think I had heated it down quite all the way. So you do want to do that because there's some spots where it's not totally smooth, but it didn't go all the way up. The resin is actually completely smooth. You can just see not quite wrinkles, but some ripples in that. So, you know, very carefully come at your project with your heat gun, but make sure that you really do get it stuck down well. It looks fine, but that's just a last little note. This piece of MDF board that I have laying underneath my piece is just a leftover chunk from one of the giant geodes that I did that I had cut with my jigsaw. And so I've got that laying underneath so that when I drill through and make my holes, I don't drill into my desk. I'm using a 3 16 drill bit and I was thinking of a darker hemp cord originally, but I found this in my stuff and it's just really cute. It's just a nice light colored fabric ribbon and I think it'll look really nice with this piece and keep it looking light. And the thing I want to do is I'm actually making a pretty small hole compared to the width of this because I want to be able to just tie a half knot in it and have that hold without it being able to come through. If it ends up being too tiny, I can always drill a little wider, but I obviously can't drill narrower. So we want to start small and get bigger if we have to. I'm going to just gently hold this down. All the other resins I've used have drilled beautifully, so I'm hoping that that is the case with this. All right, as I drill this, I'm going to go in slowly and I'm going to hold it down really well so that it doesn't spin. Oh my goodness, this is so cute and this turned out even better than I was hoping it would. I love this little piece, it's so much fun. I am going to give you guys a close up of it here and then I'm going to go hang it up and take some photos of it so you can see how it looks in better lighting than my studio space. As always, I want to thank you all so, so, so much for watching my videos and supporting me. I appreciate all the comments that you're giving me and all the feedback. It's wonderful. It gives me ideas and, and I just love it. And I really appreciate all of you. I can't believe we just blew past 13,000 subscribers. Thank you to all of you new people who are watching. 
As always, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest as The Frugal Resinista. Check out my Patreon page for bonus material and find a description of everything I've used down below in the comment section. And thank you, thank you so much to all of you. I appreciate you very much. Have a great day. Thank you.